Felicity jumped out of the jeep and sprinted for the steps of the jet. She used one as a springboard inside. She was aware of the doctor following swiftly. She moved to the flight deck. The engine was running and the jet was ready to race. Strap in, she advised, as she pointed the nose at the runway. The doctor snapped the buckle securely. Always. Now I have flown with you before. Not like this, you haven't. Felicity disagreed expressionlessly. She raced down the asphalt and hurled the aircraft into the sky with just enough room to clear the trees in front of her. She ignored her passenger's hasty, sucked-in breath of shock at the takeoff. Taranda? Kissing the red line? Ricky? Set a speed record, both of you. Doc, you on? Are you seeing what I think I am seeing? Ricky carefully aimed his body camera to picture the mess of Cam's lower abdomen. Yeah, I see. How much blood replacement do you have? Not enough for this, Ricky said grimly. As fast as the IV could put volume in, Cam's body was pushing it out. I'm a universal donor, Ace offered. Ricky looked up, pinning Ace with a hopeful look. Oh, Nag? Ace nodded. You're forgetting me. I'm the same type as Cam, Jonah added. Felicity listened as the doctor asked questions, and Ricky answered. The only good thing about any of the information was that Cam was hanging on by a very thin thread, but he was still with them. Ricky's sudden curse got her attention. Why didn't you tell me you were hit? Ricky demanded. Ace shrugged, then wished he hadn't. Un in and out. Hurts like a bitch, but I'm okay for now. Not if you are dripping blood, which you are. Blood I might need. Benny moved closer. I can handle this. Wouldn't be the first time, he muttered, as he took the supplies Ricky passed him. Ace eyed Benny as he shifted close enough to inspect the hole in his shoulder. He had some homework to do when he got back to the farm. He needed to know more about the people around him. Benny was more than a cook. He knew some of Benny's story, and he had learned a little during the hours of flight time. Jonah and Nelson were a sniper team with 25 years of service time and a pension. Both were crack shots. Jonah used more grunts than words. Nelson tended to get between his friend and people. Ricky had a rifle beside the medical supplies and Taranda was equally armed and looked as though she was enjoying weaving through the small hills and valleys of the land between them and their next touchdown site. Looks like you are going to have matching scars, Benny said, as he wiped away the blood, sluggishly bleeding from the wound. He's right, Ricky. In and out. Got some debris. You lifted your arm and turned at the wrong time, Ace. Your shooter has good aim. Didn't even kiss the edge of the vest. As he made his assessment, he bandaged the area and handed Ace a moist towelette to clean up his torso. The rest is yours. I ain't no maid. Ace shook his head as he got rid of the blood. Yeah, he definitely needed to learn more about his teammates. Every one of them had stepped into the situation on Felicity's order. If anyone was counting the cost, he couldn't see it. They were doing the job. No frills, no cute jokes, no gripes. Cam was fighting to stay alive and every man and woman was doing everything possible to see that he made it. Felicity knew how to pick her people, no matter what their background. What about me? Emily demanded suddenly. No one was paying her or her family any attention. They are tied and gagged here. What kind of rescuers did that? The men around her were no better than the monster who had kidnapped them. She curled her arms around herself. She had been raped. No one had even asked if she was all right. She hurt everywhere, and no one cared. Adam's knee was huge, and they hadn't even looked at it. Emily, Adam said wearily, we're alive and we're safe. He was in pain, and the memory of what had happened to Emily 
was etched into his brain. The idea that the only thing that had saved Amanda from being raped was her beauty. The head kidnapper had made it clear that she would be sold. Virgin beauties, especially from mega wealth families, were a pricey commodity. Adam had seen the man's anticipation and his gleeful enjoyment of the future that he knew Adam could do nothing to stop. Amanda stared at her parent. She wanted to scream. She had been terrified. There had been no one to help them. The future the kidnappers had promised was a horror story that she knew would have killed her, but not before she had learned just how brutal men could be. Her mother had the worst of it, but instead of being grateful, she was almost blaming the people who had helped them. Mother, shut up. We are out of that place, and these men were shot getting us out. Don't tell me to shut up, Emily stared at her daughter. We don't know these people. They could be as bad as the people who took us. Where are we? Jonah growled under his breath, and moved as far away from the woman as he could get. He didn't like people on his best day, and today was not even as good as a rotten day. Nelson planted himself between his teammate and the woman they had rescued. If she started yammering about her manicure or some such stuff, Ricky might have another wounded body to patch up. That was, if Jonah left anything alive when he got done. You are in Mexico. We are heading back to the States, he stated flatly, watching Emily without softening his tone at all. You're hurt. But your injuries aren't life-threatening. His are. He gets first treatment and attention. You're alive, and you wouldn't have been if we hadn't come for you, Benny muttered, for once ignoring Felicity's voice in his ear. There are all kinds of ways to die. Some are so painful you would beg to be murdered just to stop the pain. Felicity sighed softly. Emily was right. She didn't know anything about any of the people around her. If Emily had, she would be really screaming. Any one of them could be much worse than the men that had captured them. The difference was, her people had a code and a conscience. All of you stand down. We know who we are. She doesn't. She muted her microphone. She could still hear everyone, thankfully silent for the moment, but they couldn't hear her. Tell me you have something with you to knock her out, she said to the doctor. She can't come with us. There won't be enough room. Especially if you have to do more than stabilize Cam, beyond what Ricky has done. I know Ricky is coming, and I assume Ace. I may need another pair of hands. You or Benny will do. Felicity smiled faintly at the doctor's comment. Doc's bedside manner had never been the pet and stroke variety. The jet can handle that many. You can have Benny. You haven't answered my question. Do you have something to shut that woman up? My men are tired. Sniping at my people is not on the table. There are still hours of flight time before the chopper lands at the farm. I'll take care of her. Sounds like the husband will back me on giving her something to take the edge off. Felicity brought her microphone back online. Ricky, status? Unconscious still. Blood pressure is low, but no longer in a well. He's still bleeding, but not as badly. 